Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us today on Comics from the Future. We hope you're having a wonderful weekend so far, even if it's just beginning, and thank you for making us part of it. So, in case you don't know, my name's Megan. I'm Andy. And I'm Jason. We're with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And we host the show every week so that you can find out what new cool series are starting, some cool covers and variant covers we don't want you to miss. Hopefully we provide you with some good info and good news to help you with your comic ordering experience. So if we do so, please take a second to subscribe to our channel. We are so close to 1,500 subscribers, which is awesome. We really appreciate those of you who watch every week and comment. It makes our whole day. We always respond and feel good about it. So please take a second to do that. And we will get started here. All right, let's start with our featured comics of the week. Starting with, no trade dress on this one, so you'll have to trust me, but this one is Flashpoint Beyond number zero. It's funny because I was telling Jason, it says Flashpoint Beyond zero of six. I think that means it's a seven issue uh, series. <laughs> Sorry with your zero numbering, that still counts as an issue. But this is the 48 page one shot that's going to kick off the new return to the flashpoint universe uh if you don't know flashpoint uh was a big event that happened back in 2011 there actually you know when they claimed this is going to shake up the the universe it actually did for a long time uh that's how we got the new 52 and all of that back when barry allen ran back in time to save his mother and threw the dc universe in a twist and because of that Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's father, became Batman instead of Bruce. And we are returning to that character uh, who survived the destruction of his home universe. He's going back, doesn't know how he got there, doesn't know why it's still around, but he knows when he's there, he's got a mission to undertake. And that is to figure out why this is still around and to track down the identity of the clockwork killer. So... New character, sounds like, but also the interesting thing about this is uh, this is written by Jeff Johns with art by Eduardo Rizzo, and it is a little tie-in with Doomsday Clock and Watchmen, but the funny thing I heard was it's not using any Watchmen characters, it's only using Doomsday Clock characters. Mm -hmm. So that means ones that Jeff Johns created while doing that, like Marionette and Mime, and some of the uh, other side characters, which could be really interesting bringing them into a mainstream DC event. So if you're planning on jumping on board, Jeff Johns always brings really big things with his storylines, with his big events. He actually does make big changes and introduces new characters, a lot of great stuff. So don't forget to sign up for this um, because it's an issue zero. It's going to be easy to miss. But check it out. This is Flashpoint Beyond Zero coming out. And then here is the variant by our ar artist, Eduardo Rizzo, who did the original. He was the artist on Flashpoint Batman back uh, the miniseries that went along with the main thing. So I, this one, you know, it looks a little naked at the top, but it's because there's no trade dress. Right. I have a feeling this is going to get underordered because the trade dress and all isn't there. Yeah. And then when we see it in real life, it's going to look like yes. shockingly awesome somehow. Yeah. Rizzo is an awesome artist. Um, you know, artist of 100 Bullets, a bunch of really great stuff. So this feels like one of those really iconic covers when you see it in person. it's People are really going to be into it. All right, so from Marvel, nope. or wait a minute, I'm not next. from Marvel. Not from Marvel. <laughs> Silly. Getting ahead of ourselves. This is from Image, and this is really cool. This is the Image, Image 30th Anniversary Anthology. This is number one of 12 part. They call it a year-long parade of all new stories from some of the biggest names in comics. So get this, 12 issues. Every single issue is going to have a combination of standalone short stories or... Uh, a serialized stories that will last all 12 issues. So for example, the first issue here is going to have two stories that will continue for all 12 issues. The first one is going to be called Blizzard. It's by Jeff Johns and Andrea Muti. So that's the first one. We're also going to get Red Stitches by Brendan Fletcher and Erica Henderson. So those will be with us, from what I understand, for all 12 issues. And then we'll get some uh, mini stories in these as well. Um, if you are a fan of Image, 
this is going to be a really cool one, and I can only imagine what ongoing series are going to spit out of this, what they're sort of using as a testing ground here. So I, I do think these will potentially have a lot of first appearances. Um, going to have the likes of Mirka Andolfo, Kyle Higgins, Scotty Young is going to have a uh, mini comic in these as well. So just a big year-long event. So Image 30th Anniversary Anthology. I think they got a... Uh... They saw how well Skybound X did, and are like, we can do that, mm -hmm. but for the entire Image universe. Mm -hmm. And I imagine mm -hmm. you're going to be seeing some very popular, familiar faces in this as well. You know, maybe some Walking Dead, maybe some Invincible. Mm -hmm. Some, we see on the cover, I mean, Radiant Black, they're already showing you, like, hey, this is an all-new stories, too. It's some... Uh, some familiar faces. There is so much Radiant Black universe and image. I mean, they are really trying to pull that character mm -hmm. into sort of the annals of like uh, Spawn and mm -hmm. Savage Dragon, which is really, really cool because I think it totally deserves it with yeah. all the stuff they're doing. Megan, you said the first short story was by Jeff Johns. Mm -hmm. So we have two Jeff Johns things <laughs> back to back yeah. on the yes. show. So I wonder if there's not going to be another character from Geiger in this. I, I almost had the feeling that when you hear a name like Mirka Andolfo or Jeff Johns, the, theirs are going to be related to their properties that they're currently working on. Mm -hmm. um, and with Jeff Johns, Geiger, that could be awesome. Mirka Andolfo did Unnatural for Image. Yeah, we so. do know that's getting another mini series, so we could get, be getting an unnatural little thing. Okay, now from Marvel, okay. <laughs> I, I, think it's, I think it's my turn. I think it's my turn. Is Electra issue 100? So, no, you didn't miss the previous 99 <laughs> or issue 98. Um, we're talking about legacy numbering. That's how Marvel does it. So, Elektra hasn't had that many ongoing series. She has had a lot of mini series. In fact, I think, what was it, Megan? Like two years ago, somebody sold us all those Elektra mini series. Mm -hmm. It was really cool, like ones I had never seen before. But anyway, you add them all up, and she is about to hit her 100th issue. So, in honor of that, Marvel is doing this one shot. It doesn't say 100 on there, but I think it will yeah. probably when it's fully done. It's going to be double size, so it's a 40-page issue. Electra's been a lot of things. I mean, she started out just sort of an assassin, a villain. She later became an anti-hero, uh, you know, certainly Daredevil love interest. She has run the gamut. A lot of different writers have wanted to write her over the years. She's just a much bigger character than I think Frank Miller ever conceived when he made her, mm -hmm. especially because he ended up killing her <laughs> in, you know, the first, like, bunch of issues he did with her. Yeah. Um, but she was so captivating and had such a great character design, she has just endeared to this time. So uh, this is your chance to order her issue one, number 100, double size one shot. This is the regular cover. And then we have this variant by Ruin. Very cool. She's her star is is higher than ever, especially with her being Daredevil now. That's true. So I I think this is probably just a hint of what's to come for Elektra. Okay, next up, another really cool number one from DC. They've got quite a few this week. This is Batman Beyond Neo Year. Uh, and this is going to be a six issue miniseries, and you know, if you think about the name, Neo Year, it's year one. So, now this isn't technically like Terry McGinnis's first year as Batman Beyond. This is his first year as Batman Beyond without Bruce Wayne. So, in uh, Batman Urban Legends number seven, there was a short story in there where Bruce Wayne died and the Bat computer turned on them and became kind of the big villain of Gotham, which, I mean, I, Batman should have seen that coming. <laughs> but uh, this is continuing that story. So this is following Terry McGinnis's first year kind of on his own flying solo, not having Bruce there to guide him. And I think this is going to be a really cool miniseries. This is written by Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing, which are your team that did Kang the recent Kang miniseries. Oh so you know they can write some really great in-depth, uh, you know, futuristic and, and tying all these things together. So I think this is really exciting. Um, and this is our A cover for that. We also have the Ward variant. 
Yeah, I'm really happy. New Batman Beyond series. Yeah. It's a good day. Okay, this looks very interesting. This is called Alice Ever After, a new one from Boom Studios, a five-part miniseries by Dan Panogian doing the writing and Giorgio Spalletta doing the artwork. Really gorgeous cover here as well. So this is Alice all grown up. She's an adult now, and she finds herself in a cold, uncaring world, just like many of us adults. Anyway, uh, this is said to be a twisted sequel, and Alice is trying to go back to Wonderland, but she is going to have to use something a lot stronger to get there. It seems to, based on the uh, solicitation, be dealing with childhood trauma, addiction, and just some pretty dark stuff for Alice. So this is a dark sequel to Alice in Wonderland, Alice Ever After. Looks to be pretty good. So this is our Panosian cover A. We have a Jenny Frizen B cover on this. And of course, her uh, she's got a pet rabbit. <laughs> and then we have, this is our special FOC reveal cover by J. Scott Campbell. So, we'll dive in and see what this is all about. Alright, so, new ongoing series, Knights of X. This is just so different, because this is set in Otherworld, which is of course like um, Arthurian yeah. fantasy world. But it's going to have mutants in it. So uh, Betsy Braddock, she became Captain Britain a while back. Um, just to catch everyone up in case you haven't been reading the X-Books in the last year or so. She's been Captain Britain. Well, she gets trapped in Otherworld. I don't mean for a little while. Like, she is stuck there in this. And um, meanwhile, you got Merlin and King Arthur, who are both villains. They've taken over the lunatic citadel. So it's up to uh, Betsy the the other world captain britain mutant to pull together her own round table and i think that's what really interests me mm -hmm. is i really wonder what character she's going to pull together into her own x team i wonder if we're going to get some new mutants mm -hmm. that are arthurian or maybe also stuck there for a while um you know if this were a mini series i don't know how much they would do but since it's an ongoing i feel like they've got to really do a lot of things yeah. um to, to keep this going past issue five or six so that, that was probably the most interesting part of researching this is that I was like, oh, cool, this is going to be a neat little miniseries. Nope. It it's continues on and on and on. Um, also, it says she's going up against Furies that are the size of Sentinels. So that tells me they're going to kind of mirror things That's from the cool. mutant world, but in the Arthurian world. So I, I like Breth Betsy Braddock a lot. She's been through so many different <laughs> things. She's been, you know... A lot of different things over and over again. Now she's Captain Britain. I think getting her away from the X-Men, we'll get to really see what she's doing. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, she was doing that in Excalibur, but, you know, there are other characters to cover. Yeah. So it's going to let her shine this time. So here is the main cover to Knights of X. And then here is the Hetrick variant. We have the Segovia variant. And lastly, we have... The Scotty Young variant. So it's like uh, Shatter Shatterstar is going to yeah. be in there. Which is good. All the people who use swords are allowed mm -hmm. in to the medieval There you go. Setting. Yeah, they're part of the new round table. That <laughs> makes sense. He could be uh, Lancelot or Galahad yeah. or something. I hope they have like ye old danger room or something. <laughs> okay, next up. This is exciting for everyone who is big fans of the CWDC universe this is earth prime number one of a six part miniseries and this is completely set within the cw verse uh, it's in canon this is all uh, official stuff that the shows will reflect and everything and in each of these six issues it's going to spotlight a different um tv show and then the final issue is going to pull them all together in a big crossover event so this first one is going to be of Batwoman, and it sounds really cool because this is actually going to be the uh, first appearance of um, Ryan Wilder as Batwoman in the in the comics, the CW version of her, and it also is going to be introducing the CW's version of Clayface, which I always love when there's a new version of a character you get to see how they would interpret it maybe who will uh be on the shows later on so this is for the first one and we do know that the second one is going to be uh, based on the superman and lois series 
So if you are a big fan, definitely want to pick this one up. There's also going to be a variant cover that is a photo cover, but they didn't have it available, but you can only imagine it's it's a photo. That's kind of funny, you know, a photo cover not available. It's like, have they not taken this picture yet? Like, I think the show probably is done filming. Yeah. They were looking at a bunch of them. They're like, this one? No, we just can't make up our minds. Some intern went off the lunch and just never came back. All right. Next up is Project Superpowers Fractured States. This is, I guess, sort of a, a volume two or a spinoff of the original Project Superpowers created by Alex Ross and Jim Kruger. This is a new creative team working on this side of things. With Project Super Heroes, basically they would take heroes who had fallen into public domain and reinvent them. So that's what's continuing to go on here, except it's set three decades in the future, in the year 2052, in a much darker world, uh, a world where someone is killing all of the patriotic superheroes. So they likened this a lot to DC Future State, uh, what's going on there, but with Project Superpowers instead. So this is going to be a five-part miniseries. So if you like the original or if the premise sounds interesting to you, I'm sure they'll catch you up on issue one. So let's take a look at some covers. I love this one. This is our cover B, the Frank cover. Getting Gary Frank to do a cover is pretty big. Yeah. And then we have cover C by Borges. Cover D, Andrade cover and then the foc liefeld is this an homage it's is an this homage. actually liefeld okay it's yeah, yeah it's, a, it's an homage <laughs> Hard for me to see from here. dynamite's doing uh, a bunch of different homage covers to oh, liefeld covers right but i really like these public domain characters i feel like you can do a lot with mm -hmm. them and and kind of build off of you know them way back in the 30s and everything oh yeah really cool and as of a few years ago they can fight with peter pan now <laughs> oh yeah because he's yeah, definitely he's gonna have to <laughs> Anyone who reads fables and knows about all that. All the public domain. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay, so now we're going to get to other number ones, beginning with Vanity. So this is from Black Caravan. This is a horror book that is sort of historical fiction because it's all about the blood countess Elizabeth Bathory. So she has a, a very sort of sordid history. I mean, nobody was around for it, but a lot of uh rumors mm -hmm. and bad things that she did this starts at the end of her life like it's literally begins with some grave diggers and they're putting her to her final rest um and i guess discussing who she was and i assume we're going to see a lot of that in flashback i wonder if she's really going to stay dead yeah um i know a lot of this is going to be her her past like her her deep past how she became how she was leading up to this death and who knows maybe beyond so that is the premise for the new Black Caravan comic, Vanity. Next up is the return of Rocketeer. Uh, Rocketeer is celebrating his 40th anniversary since his first appearance um, from the amazing Dave Stevens. And this is a new miniseries that is, uh, it sounds really cool. The Rocketeer is back and he's going on a, uh, a race. It is a air race but that is going from California to France, which that's a long way to go with just a jetpack. You get very tired. You need like headphones or something while you're doing that. But of course, there's going to be villains and other contestants who uh, are willing to do anything to take out the competition. And also, Rogateer decides he wants to bring his, uh, his love interest, Betty, along for the ride as well. I'm not sure where she's going to ride. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just carrying her the whole time. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see about this, but he's promised her a vacation in France. So this sounds really fun. Uh, this also is going to have a kind of backup in each issue that's an essay uh, talking with Dave Stevens' friends, family, and fellow artists about... Uh, about the creation of Rocketeer and just Dave Stevens as uh, as a kind of comics legend that I think would be really cool for fans of that kind of comics history and everything. So this is our A cover, and then we have the Mooney variant. Next up is Dark Beach. This is from Behemoth Comics. It is 
uh, I, I, I couldn't tell if it was a mini series or not, but it probably is considering it's behemoth. But it is about um, Earth has been drifting away from the sun slowly for three decades. And our main character is this crime scene photographer. They basically live in a bubble and that's how they're able to survive. But based on the solicitation, it seemed like there were some conspiracy theories uh, going on in this world where they're saying the sun is bad and we don't want it close to us anyway. But there are, of course, those who exist from before and know that the sun is good for us. So we'll see what goes on in here. It seems like a crime noir world, obviously set in a dark world, with the sun drifting away from Behemoth. And we have a few covers for you. That was cover A. And now we have cover B from Ray. And cover D, Doe. Looks like she's playing on her Oculus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you were just doing Dark Beach. This is Ocean Will Take Us. A lot of sort of beach ocean based <laughs> indie comics coming out all at once. So this is a horror comic from Aftershock. And basically it says that there is something sinister in the waters of Almanzar Bay. And a group of outcast kids must band together to figure out what it is. It's sort of horror thriller intrigue and also try to save their city. So I think we have on the cover right there, sort of our group. So if you like horror and sort of um, ocean tales or maybe, you know, outcasts with a reason to click up other than the fight with other clicks, maybe <laughs> you will enjoy this new comic from Aftershock. I think the title's good. Ocean will take us. That sounds yeah. From the preview pages, creepy. there's some there's some scary tentacles coming from underwater and all of that. So yep, and just the one cover on this. And next up, it's GI Joe, another uh, 40th anniversary. Just like Rocketeer, this is G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, 40th Anniversary Special. And they're kind of taking a cue from what uh, Marvel's been doing. And they are uh, retelling the classic issue of G.I. Joe, which was number, uh, what was it, 21, I believe? I thought it was 51. It's one of those. <laughs> Let us know in the comments. Yeah, but the, the famous silent issue, yeah. that was like the, the first comic to really pull off that silent issue uh, with Snake Eyes. And they are redoing it, but this time with 22 different artists. So Marvel's done that with their Fantastic Four and uh, Captain America. This time they are doing it with G.I. Joe. So I always love seeing weird different interpretations of those pages. Also, this is an oversized issue because it has a new short story by Larry Hama and essays from creators who were uh, influenced by Larry Hama as well. So I think this will be a really fun addition. Yeah, I mean, that issue, the silent issue, I've read it. I've gone through it several times. It's mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. Larry Hama, he was writing some ridiculously good G.I. Joe stuff. The artists are supposed to be using his original storyboarding. Yeah. Like, not just they're looking at the old comic, but, like, they're apparently going to get his, like, rough sketches mm -hmm. and then do their version of it. Um, that, packed with the fact that he's doing some original stuff in this and the essays, I mean, this is, like, a no-brainer yeah. to buy. I mean, I, I definitely am going to jump on this. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're going to get to cool covers and other comics. This is going to be a lot of great variant covers that you can order this week and issue number two and threes of books that you might want to sign up on. All right, so this is Captain Carter number two. Number one just dropped this week, so if you liked it or missed out on it, add it to your pull list. In this, it is more of her dealing with being unfrozen and in a modern-day world and also figuring out that Hydra still exists. So this is going to be a five-part mini-series, pretty sure. So don't miss out on number two. This is your A cover. And then we have the Aspinall variant. It's just a really cool cover. I was going to say, just, yeah, what she's wearing is just yeah. very cool. All right, so this is issue number three for Star Wars Halcyon Legacy. And this is just a regular cover. What's going on in this issue, you got uh, Anakin and Padme. They are undercover and in disguise on the Halcyon. So a lot of um, spy intrigue in the days of the Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. So, again, this is issue number three. This is the regular cover. Then you have this slimy cover, which is the connecting variant. And lastly, there is the woo variant. I feel like this is one of the books that we've had more people come in after the fact asking about. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I guess it just took a while for the news to get around about it. Or they've been watching videos about the, the hotel at Disney and want to get it. So definitely sign up to get this so you don't miss out. I've been reading all about the Halcyon Hotel and watching videos on it. And I know that this is as close as I can get to it <laughs> with how much money I have. Yes. Yeah, if you can afford three ninety nine, you can take your own imagination trip. There, there you go. Okay, next up is Batman Killing Time, number two. We just got number one of that this week. And this is by Tom King, uh, telling a story from the past where Catwoman has teamed up with Riddler to steal what they claim is the most valuable possession in the DC universe. Now, we don't know what it is yet. Um, we were speculating what it could possibly be. But, of course, Batman, you can't have that. Batman's on their trail, as well as the new villain, The Help. So, uh, if you read number one, liked it, sign up for it. If you didn't, your store probably still has a few copies. Check it out, and then sign up for it. Yeah, I thought number one was really good. Um, I urge people, give it a try. Mm -hmm. You know, it's only a six-issue miniseries. Yeah. You're not signed up for, like... You know 12 issues or anything like that but it's cool seeing catwoman be a villain again yeah it's, it's been, been a, a while, while since she's she's a flat out like villain in this and the first issue was just a really good um crime issue mm -hmm. so. and we have a variant for it this is the kale new variant yeah good battle between batman and killer croc in the first issue mm -hmm. too all right, next up is Monkey Prince, number three of this 12-part ongoing or maxi series. <laughs> it can feel ongoing when it's here long. Anyway, Monkey Prince is still learning his powers in this issue, and he is possibly going to have to face one of his greatest fears of all time, teaming up with Batman. We will see if that happens here. So this is, once again, issue three. This is your cover A, and then we have the Inyuk Lee cover B. Okay, so this is the cover to Batman Urban Legends number 14. Um, actually, this is the Giuseppe mm -hmm. variant. And in this, it's going to be more of the stories that have been running throughout, like the one with uh, Batman and Zatanna, mm -hmm. which has been really interesting. They've added Constantine to the team lately. And then the backup story, one of the other stories, right? It's on a backup story. They're, <laughs> they're all, all kind of backup stories. Yeah, they're all, they all have the uh, same page count. But the other one with Ace the Bat Hound leading the new team of Super Pets. I've really enjoyed that one a lot. So once again, this is Batman Urban Legends number 14, the Kevin Coley variant. They also say, yeah, that there's going to be a story in it with Batman teaming up with the question. I just thought this cover is really cool to see Batman back in the blue with the yellow mm -hmm. symbol. Very classic Batman. And next up is Little Monsters number two. Of course, this is the new one that just started from Jeff Lemire. And uh, Dustin Nguyen, uh, about little vampires in the, in the future, uh, kid vampires living by themselves. And it says in uh, issue number two, more is revealed about the young vampires. And also, uh, where has their urge for blood gone and what causes them to remember it again? So, sounds pretty cool. Uh, very creepy covers for this one. You know, I just read issue one, and what you learned from the solicitation of part two just told me some things I didn't figure out. <laughs> I know, I totally get uh, some parts of issue number one a little better. And I mean, it's purposeful. They're, they're yeah. slowly rolling it out, but okay, cool. All right. So this is our A cover, and then we have the Zonjic variant. Very dark, very creepy. And then we have Radiant Red, number two of five parts. This is following the character that we met in Radiant Black. She is a school teacher, a wife, an aunt, but she's a very complex character and kind of trying to do some good, but in a bad way, and gets mixed up in some things in this mini series. So if you saw number one, number two is coming at you. Okay, so time for the second issue of the second series of Red Room which he called Red Room Trigger Warnings. Just like a slap in the face of anybody who, who it all wants censorship on anything, <laughs> calling it Trigger Warnings. But uh, anyway, I think everybody knows what they're in for with this comic. You're either on board or you're not. It's certainly well done. <laughs> but this is going to introduce two new characters. You see them on the cover. They're called the Pumpkins. 
And they're, they're probably just cute. They're probably just cute little pumpkin <laughs> kids. I, I guess so, but they are a team of psychopaths who are trying to join the Red Room, and they're they're sort of really good at it, and you get to see, you know, their rise to stardom. So, <laughs> issue two of Red Room Trigger Warnings now available. Next up, I love this cover for Black Panther Legends number four. This is the Juni Ba variant, and uh, this is... Since this is the kind of um, retelling of Black Panther's origin, this is the final issue of it, where Black Panther teams up with the Fantastic Four to go up against Claw. And uh, just a great fun cover. It is. Ginny Ba is like, you know, the fingers are one gang and the thumb <laughs> sort of opposition. <laughs> and then we have the Sway Black History Month variant. All right, next up we have a lot of covers featuring Spider-Man, and I completely forgot to look up why Marvel is doing this. Because of Spider-Man. I mean, I just took it for granted, but... It's his uh, 60th anniversary. 60th anniversary yep. of Spider-Man, according to the cover, that I totally knew <laughs> what was going on. Anyway, uh, we're going to have some Spider-Man featured covers on a bunch of different series, including Black Panther number 5. This is the Boss Logic Spider-Man variant. We have Eternals number 11, going to be the Lupacino Spider-Man variant. Venom number 7, the Woods Spider-Man variant. X-Men 10, the Mana Spider-Man variant. And <laughs> Shang-Chi number 11, the Raza Spider-Man variant. I just love that the artists get to kind of design new Spider-Man mm -hmm. costumes. Like the <laughs> X-Men one, it looks like Jean Grey has like a green Spider-Man costume. It's just really cool. Mm-hmm. So here is the Kale New variant for Miles Morales Spider-Man number 37. And, uh, you know, in this issue, Miles and Schiff, they have survived the Beyond Corporation mm -hmm. in the previous issues. But now they're on an alternate, not an alternate, an altered dimensional quest. That's what it says, an altered dimensional quest. So that's what's going on here. And here is the new variant. I think that was not the new variant. That was the Spider-Man variant, but I think we got the wrong one on there. But it is the, the correct <laughs> issue. I know, because I was remembering what the new variant looks like. Okay. Okay, so here is Darth Vader number 22. And I love when they do these really iconic covers, just Vader wreaking havoc. And in this one, uh, it's Vader's kind of in game. Um, he's taken out... All the people he feels like he needs to take out from Crimson Dawn and everything. And no one is safe. Not even the Empire. There's even people in the Empire he's going after. So this is... Uh, I'm not sure if this is wrapping up his Crimson Dawn crossover. But it sounds like it's going to be really cool. This is our A cover. And then we have the uh, Renaud Traitor of Dawn variant. More Ochi. Ochi. He's just... He's in it as much as Vader is. Yep. I mean, when they first had Ochi, I said, this is a useful character yeah. because he is a bounty hunter, but he talks a lot. you mm -hmm. got to have your characters who are the mouthpieces, and he was just perfect You for can't that. have Vader just being a chatterbox. Yep. <laughs> that just goes against his character. Mm -hmm. yep. Next up, Batman 122. This is part two of the Shadow War story. Ra's al Ghul is dead, and Talia is out for revenge in this. This is cover A by Howard Porter. And then we have the Gabrielle Delato, really sleek and nice B cover. All right, so attention everyone. Spawn <laughs> Scorch number four has a McFarlane variant cover that is not available to see right now. Now, all of us retailers have until Monday to place our order. This cover is probably not going to be done by then, which means a lot of retailers are not going to order enough. But this is one of those X Men book homage connecting ones. You know, the first one was the Cyclops. Yep. homage one that sold like wildfire off of our shelves so this is the one because it's not ready yet um like on the last one mcfarland actually uh gave everyone an extra week yeah because it made the news i don't think they're going to do that this time so here is your chance to be smart order one or however many of these that you want uh from your store to guarantee you're going to get them we'll have a plenty because we know mm -hmm. but other stores they don't do shows like we do <laughs> they don't keep up as well so this is your chance to let them know you want this one ordered for sure. Oh, this is mine. This is uh, for Dynamite Never Dies number two, and this is the Michael's Life Field homage cover. So uh, 
we always wonder now what's the next book that they're going to homage. Mm -hmm. It looks like it. This is uh, New Mutants ninety eight. Yeah, I see correct. That. Yep, because the faces the of, faces. The, of mm -hmm. the New Mutants on the That's pretty left clever. There. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, and that would be Deadpool and Gideon right there. Yep. Yeah, so for everyone who loves getting these homage covers, you don't want to miss out on these. Okay, now we're going to get to other printings and graphic novels. A lot of cool second printings uh, this week. A lot. Some big, big books. And some facsimiles starting out. Amazing Spider-Man number one facsimile from 1963. Um, this is pretty cool. His, uh, obviously, I don't need to tell you why this is cool, <laughs> but uh, they have not reprinted this too often. So don't miss your chance to get it. You don't have to pull out your copy and read it because everyone has their <laughs> copy, but you don't want to uh -huh. mess it up. You know, I'm really glad they're reprinting this on the one hand. You know, we could always use a facsimile of this. But I have a feeling it's going to up how many people call us on the phone and go, I got the first Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man here, you know. And I'm like, does it have a barcode on it? Does it have a barcode? It... What's the actual price on it? Does it say three ninety nine or whatever? <laughs> it, it really yeah, it hurts a lot of people's dreams that they found this, you know, amazing book. Okay, so speaking of other facsimiles, they are doing a facsimile edition of Sandman number one, the Neil Gaiman comic that started it all. Um, you know, I'm sure either you've read Sandman or some of your comic book friends have read Sandman and they bugged you and bugged you to read it. <laughs> uh, now it's even going to be a Netflix show. Mm -hmm. That's a done deal. I think that's going to happen either towards the end of this year or early next year. Mm -hmm. So here's your chance to read that first issue which is now a very pricey comic. And now we have Black Panther number four is going back to print. This is the second printing with that Alex Ross cover. Black Panther series right now is super hot. Everybody's grabbing it up because of the new character. So don't miss out. And this is Ghost Rider number one, the Stegman second printing variant. If some, you somehow missed it, I know this sold out really quick. So Ghost Rider number one, second print. And here's the second print for Iron Fist number one. This, of course, was the debut of a brand new Iron Fist. Now, of course, the person who it is, it wasn't his first appearance, but it is their first appearance as a new Iron Fist, and it looks like they're going to stay that way for some time, possibly permanently. Mm -hmm. uh, so another really hot issue that has gone back to second print. And also, She-Hulk... Number two, second print, because this has been selling like crazy. Uh, people loving this new series, plus all these great Jen Bartel covers. So, yep, this is She-Hulk number two, second print. See, this inspires me to get a chair that just says Jason I can sit on all the time. Because <laughs> that just works so well for her. I bet you could pull off just as well. <laughs> There's a really gnarly cover for Venom number five. This is the Hitch second printing variant in the original number five, or the first print. It was the first appearance of the Kings in black and the first full appearance of Bedlam. All right, here is the trade paperback for Batman versus Bigby, A Wolf in Gotham. So this was the Batman crossover with the beloved Sheriff from the Fables comic as he made his way to Gotham. Meanwhile, uh, there's a wolf that's just like him attacking people. So Batman thinks it's him, and the two, uh, they fight a whole lot, I'll tell you that. They mm -hmm. get quite a few fights, but they have to team up to figure out who the real wolf is. So it's just $20 for those of you who are waiting for a collected form of this. As well as Demon Days, this is Demon Days Treasury Edition. This is $34.99. And this collects uh, Demon Days, X-Men, Mariko, Cursed Web, Rising Storm, and Blood Feud, as well as material from King and Black number four. Which I was trying to remember what happened in King and Black number four that would be related to this. I'm not sure. Hmm. But if you want a beautiful edition of all of Peach Momoko's uh, fantastic series, this is a great one. Yeah, you got me there. Um... So if it's Treasury, is it going to be like the really big Treasury format? I couldn't format? tell because that would be a very thick... I was going to say they don't tend to make those yeah, that much. Yeah, but the word Treasury usually implies a treasury size comic. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't find dimensions on it, but... It uh, doesn't look like it from the picture. No. So they might have just used the word Treasury. Maybe it's just a treasure to, to treasure it. <laughs> treasure it, everyone. Yes. 
And then all you Ghost Rider fans, this is for only $15.99, collecting Ghost Rider The Return of Blaze trade paperback. All right, so they're already soliciting a collected <laughs> version of X Lives of Wolverine and X Devs of Wolverine. Instead of having the two series mm. apart, you can read them together, um, probably as it, the whole thing was conceived. Yep. So uh, both of them are five-issue series, so you're getting ten full issues in this. This is the whole thing. It is a hardcover for just $75. I think it ends up being 288 pages. This is Wolverine. He's sort of going back in time, but it's not like in his own body. Like he jumps into the body mm -hmm. of people to try to stop a mega red who is trying to uh, kill people a la Back to the Future style. <laughs> so that's what's going on in this. And it's, it's still going on, but they've got to go ahead and take orders yep. for this now. So 75 bucks. We got two covers on it. This is the Kubert cover. And then we have a Mark Brooks cover. Messing up that road. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is cool, and it's funny that the last one was $75, because this one is also $75. This is Heroes Reborn, America's Mightiest Heroes, Onubis. And this collects all of Heroes Reborn, uh, one through seven, plus all of the miniseries and one-shots. So this is actually 560 pages for $75. And we have two covers for this as well. This is our A cover, the McGinnis. And then we have the other cover, which is the Pacheco. And that is our show for today. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we helped you figure out some good stuff to check out this time. For most shops, your orders for DC books are due on Sunday. And then the rest can be put in on Monday. So just make sure to let them know as soon as possible, as soon as you finish watching this show, what you want from your store. And if you need a store... Uh, we're going to pop up some info on the screen of how you can check us out. Thank you so much.